All right, take, uh, take your Bible and turn to 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. And um, I want to preach this morning on five sacrifices made by fathers. Five sacrifices sacrifices made by fathers. And with each one of these, there's a lesson to be learned by fathers. With each one of these. And some of them we want to be like, some of them we do not want to be like. Uh, This first one is a clear example of a sacrifice that you do not want to do as a father. All right? But this was a sacrifice made by a father. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Kings chapter 3. And let's pick up with verse... um, I want to get the context here a little bit. And uh, let's go back up and get verse 21. It says, And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor, and upward, and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is, the, this is blood, the kings are surely slain. And they have smitten one another, now therefore Moab to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country. And they beat down the cities, and every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water and felled all the good trees, only in Ker-Hareseth, Left they the stones thereof, howbeit the singers went, slingers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered them for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that as fathers we'll take and be the right kind of father, making the right kind of sacrifices. And I pray that we'll be examples to our children, As you are an example to us, I pray that we'll learn from you. I pray that this message will be an encouragement to fathers today to be the right kind of father, to build our character, to see what things should be a priority in our life so that we don't receive the sorrows down the road through our children that making mistakes will cause us to have. But I pray that we'll be a father like you being good examples to our children, raising them right, and um, pointing them towards you. And in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Here we have the first sacrifice of a father that we're going to look at, and he sacrificed his son on a wall during wartime. And this sacrifice had one purpose in mind that this father had. And it's called self-preservation. Self-preservation. And the children of Israel, when they saw this, they were so sickened by it and disgusted by it that they turned and just, we're done. (laughs) You know, war's over. We're done. (laughs) We're not fighting this clown anymore. Uh, It was such a terrible act that this guy did that caught them so far off guard that they're like, I, I can't believe that this guy just did that. that. That's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Let's just turn and let's walk away. 
But when we see the act of what this father did, he made a sacrifice, and this sacrifice was a sacrifice of self-preservation. It was a sacrifice of self-preservation. It makes me think about another story in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 6. It's just a little farther down the road where the king of Samaria, Ahab's son, is up on the wall and Elisha had took him, given him a prophecy about when Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, would come against them. And they're under siege. And under that siege, they go through a great famine. And there's these two women. And they have children. The, the, the king's walking upon the wall and the woman, woman cries out to him and says, Help! Help! And the king says, how can I help you? And she says, well, I made an agreement with this other woman that had a son that we would eat my son today and we'd eat her son tomorrow. We ate my son. Now she won't, she's hidden her son. And that wicked king, the son of Ahab, the son of a murderer, as Elisha called him, he ran his clothes. He ran his clothes. It disturbed them so bad to see the act of self-preservation against one's own children. It disturbed them. It disturbed them. But I'd like us to step back and look, examine our lives and look how many acts we do as fathers with our children that are actually selfish and more for our interest instead of theirs. You know what that is. That's the act of self-preservation. That's the act of self-preservation. And there's something about human nature that does not like to put others first, including one's own children. One's own children. But a good father shouldn't be that way. A good father should always put their children first. If you're going to be a righteous father, a godly father, the right kind of father, you should put your children first, above yourself. Self-preservation is not the sacrifice that you should make. uh, Many of fathers have brought themselves sorrow down the road because they did an act of self-preservation and their children bore the cost. They did not put their children first. And many a times when I witness to go door knocking and I find some Christian something and I'm inviting them to church, if I'm dealing with a father with children, you know what I'll tell that father many a times? I'll say the best thing you can do for your kids is take the time to take them to church and teach them to serve God. Well, I'm not a Christian. I said... Yeah, but you don't want your children to be like you, do you? Many a times they don't. You know, many a father wants their children to be better. Why? Because they love their children. They want them to be better than themselves. I I remember a guy one time that I worked with, and he, uh, he said something that I thought was quite remarkable. Now, this guy was lost. He was a lost man. And lost man has this character, shame on Christians if they don't. And this lost guy, he, he, we, we got talking about drugs and alcohol, and he says, I will not touch alcohol. I, I was a little bit surprised. He says, why? He says, because my father was an alcoholic. And I didn't have a good dad. He was always drunk. He was always abusive. And the alcohol destroyed his life. And he destroyed our family. And I swore when I was a kid, when I grow up, I would not be my father. I won't touch the stuff. I was a lost man that had that character. He had that character not to mess with alcohol. Why? Because he was not going to take and be his father. You can break those cords. You don't have to be the selfish father. You say, well, my dad was selfish. That doesn't mean that you have to be. Just because he sacrificed you on the altar of selfishness does not mean that you should do the same with your children. Break those cords. Break those cords. Make a change. 
You see something wrong with your father? Well, then don't do that when you become older. Don't do the same thing. And, uh, and sometimes we need to look at it that way. Don't sacrifice your children on the altar of selfishness. On the altar of selfishness. That, that's a, or self-preservation. And many of fathers have made that mistake. They've offered their children on the act of self-preservation. It's never about what's best for the children. It's what is best for them or what's enjoyable for them. Uh, you, you know, many abusive father, uh, the only reason he's being abusive is not because of the good of his children. It's because of his own selfishness. His own selfishness. I mean, I understand correction. I'm fine with correction. But when you correct, you're correcting out of love to improve your child, to help your child in the future. Not just to take and blow off your own steam. And you got to take and be careful with that, fathers, when it comes to your children. Are you doing that for self-preservation? Or are you doing something that's actually helpful to your children? This guy was a wicked father. I'll tell you, the world's watching you as a Christian when you take and do an act of self-preservation. They see that and it will bring a shame to the name of Christ. They'll look at that and they'll say, Man, that's what a Christian father is. I don't want nothing to do with that. I've seen many a child not go to church and use the excuse of their hypocritical parents to not go and serve God because they see you know, like, well, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be one. And they're talking about their own parents. Talking about their own parents. One thing I'd like to warn about, warn you as a father, do not be a father that sacrifices your children on the altar of self-preservation. Don't be that man, fathers. And if you're a mother, don't be that mother. Don't eat your own. And you say, that's, that's a terrible thing to say. Well, them ladies in First, Second Kings chapter 6, they ate their own. They ate their own. You'd be surprised how depraved your nature is when it's selfish. Number two, the second sacrifice I see is the unaccepted sacrifice. The sacrifice that is unacceptable, it can't be given. If you take your Bible and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 18, 2 Samuel chapter 18, we see a desired sacrifice here. It's a desired sacrifice. In 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 31 through 33, it says, And behold, Cushai came, and Cushai said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt me as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept, and he went thus, and he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I have died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Here David wants us to make a sacrifice of himself for the sake of his son. And Joab tries to correct David. He misreads David. David's mourning over his son. He wants to sacrifice himself. Joab says, well, would it have been alright if all your concubines, all your wives, all your children, all your servants got killed? For your enemy's sake, you need to go talk to him. That's not what David was doing. David wanted to sacrifice himself for his son. And David's reasoning was normal. He was not right now the man that this other king was. He desired to sacrifice himself for his son. 
But the problem was the sacrifice came, the desire for sacrifice came too late. The desire for sacrifice came too late. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And let me tell you something, fathers, when your children are young, you have a time to sacrifice your body for your children and sacrifice it to the Lord to live a righteous and holy life that's reasonable and acceptable. You know what one of Psalm Absalom's problems was? Absalom did not have respect for his father. Where do you think he lost that respect? Absalom was born in Hebron, and after seven years, King David moves to Jerusalem. And as Absalom is in a young, impressionable age, do you know what Absalom sees? He sees his father, the king, sleep with a woman and murder her husband. Like father, like son. Absalom goes and sleeps with ten concubines for his own self-gratification to put himself Ten of the king's compromise, so his father would look abhorred in the children of Israel. The sentence that was given against David by Nathan was that what he did in secret would be done openly. And that was fulfilled with Absalom. It was fulfilled with Absalom. David's sin had come to the surface and his sentence was carried out in Absalom. And David at that point, he wanted to die for his son Absalom. He wanted to pay for his sins, but there was the problem. His desire for sacrifice was too late and unacceptable. Why? Because it was too late. It was too late. There's a lesson to be learned there. And that we want to make the sacrifice with our children before it's too late. You want to sacrifice for your children? Do it before it's too late. When do you spend time with your kids? Now. Don't wait. One of the things I I try to balance my life as a preacher and as a father. And one one of the things that I have learned to focus on in my life, is my children are my greatest pupils. I'm not trying to belittle my congregation, but my kids are more important to me than you are. I'm sorry. (laughs) We'll we'll be honest there. Let's be honest. They're my children. They, They are my greatest disciples. Okay? They are my ministry. Okay? They are the ones that I'm going to try to spend the most time influencing in them. Why? Because God entrusted me with them. Okay? So with that, it's required that I take some time and spend it with them. One of the things, I try to divide my time in such a way where I take time for my kids. I I hope that when they grow old, they don't sit there and think, well, Dad never took us fishing. Matter of fact, I ask them to go fishing, they're like, no, not today, Dad. <laughs> I'll take them fishing anytime. Marion wanted to go fishing yesterday. We went fishing. We, we, we were down in the dock, sleep was pouting us, wind was going. I was looking at her like, you done yet? You ready to go yet? <laughs> you done? Finally, she gave up. She was like, all right, that's enough, Dad. Let's go home. <laughs> we left. <laughs> we went home. But, but you know, you say, what, what is... Fishing an important thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know why it's important? Because someday when my kids grow older and there's a time when they want dad's advice and they're in a rock and a hard place or they're going through some trouble, I want them to pick up that phone and say, dad was always there with me. I got a good relationship with Dad. I can call Dad. And I can talk to Dad. But for me to build that relationship, I need to do it now. 
Because when, once they're older and gone, I won't have the chance. I won't have the chance. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till too late. You may have a desire to sacrifice yourself for your kids, but if you wait for it till it's too late, it will be unaccepted. It will be unaccepted. David made the mistake of waiting till it was too late with Absalom. He waited too long. I I wonder sometimes if David hadn't committed that sin, if Absalom would have actually been the king instead of Solomon. Something in Absalom went wrong now. I'm not justifying Absalom. Absalom died for his own wickedness. He was a wicked son. Absalom got what he deserved. But I wonder if he went that direction because David did not sacrifice his own fleshly desires while Absalom was young and watching. Your kids need a good example. They need you to give them that good example. Will you sacrifice your own desires to be a good father? I know I'm preaching to a bunch of fathers that's already, most of y'all are probably grandparents by now. But, um, but, but if you, some of you younger married folks, you have children, remember, Now's the time to spend influence your children. You got 18 years with them to influence them. Influence them to the best of your ability. Influence them to the best of your ability. Sacrifice some time for them. Don't wait till it's unaccepted. The next sacrifice I see is the sacrifice of duty. Now this one is a complicated one. It's in Judges chapter 11. Judges chapter 11, verse 35 through 40. Judges chapter 11, verse 35 through 40. Now, it's a third sacrifice I see that's done by a father with his children. It says, And it came to pass when he saw her, they rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, for thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of my mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down unto the mountains and be well my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions and be well to her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of the two months that she turned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man and was custom in Israel. And the daughters of Israel went early to lament the daughter of Japheth the Gilead for four days in a year. Now this is a conflicting sacrifice because it was done both out of duty but also out of ignorance. There's both duty and ignorance in this thing. He had a duty as a captain and a soldier to take and fulfill his leadership role and he does that. You know what I've seen with many a man? Many a man has sacrificed their children out of duty to something that they felt was a noble cause. Uh, many a military man has driven their child away with his toughness and his sense of duty. Many a pastor has done the same to his son. I, I know a pre- me and a preacher's Son can be a difficult thing from what I've watched. Um, they, they have a joke among um, the ministry. It's preachers' children are always the worst. <laughs> now, my children, y'all don't have too many kids in here, but, so maybe you can say that, but, or maybe not. But uh, the ideal is the pressure of the ministry falls upon the child. And that child may not be called into the ministry. And you know what? There's many a child 
by the pastor will take and put the pressures of the ministry on the children. Pressures of the ministry doesn't belong on the children. It belongs on the pastor. Okay? If God calls them into the ministry, then they'll have the pressures of the ministry. But that's between them and God. Okay? That's between them and God. And you don't take and sacrifice your children due to duty. You raise them right. You raise them to fear God. You raise them to love God. You raise them to serve God. And then you turn them over to God and let God do with them what He wants to do with them. As long as they're in tune and they have a right relationship with them, they'll do what God wants them to do. You know, I, I don't care if my children ever pastor or preach or not, but I would like to see them serve God their entire life and love them and have a close relationship with them. And they can do that as a church member. A faithful church member. They don't have to be a foreign missionary. They don't have to be some preacher or evangelist or great man of God or great woman of God. As long as they're doing what God wants them to do, have a close relationship and faithful to Him and doing what's right the rest of their life, I'll be a happy father. I'll be a happy father. But I'm not going to push duty on them so heavily that it destroys them. Here Japheth sacrificed his daughter through duty. And it was an act of ignorance. You know the problem with when you sacrifice your children on duty? A lot of times you think you're doing the right thing when you're doing the wrong thing. You know, Japheth sacrificed his daughter. That was not what God wanted him to do. Later in the Bible, we read about uh, them sacrificing their children. And God says, that didn't ever enter into my mind. He goes, neither did it enter into my mind. There was a sacrifice in the Levitical law that Japheth could have done for a vow of ignorance. Because that vow was made out of ignorance. Him sacrifice. God was just silent on the matter and let Japheth do. When you read that thing, Japheth, uh, God doesn't give His opinion about that sacrifice one way or the other. You never read in Scriptures what God thought about that. He did that because He thought it was the right thing to do and His duty to do because He had made a vow and He said, I cannot go, but it was a vow of ignorance. And he was ignorant. You know what many fathers will do? They will sacrifice their children in duty because they are ignorant of what God really wants for their children. And they say, God wants this for you. And they push that duty and they push that duty and they push that duty and the child doesn't feel that duty and then the child is driven away. And they drive them away. Why? Because they put something on them that shouldn't have been put on them. You know, you, you know many a father has driven their kids and says, well, I was a soldier, your grandfather was a soldier, and your great-grandfather was a soldier, and you need to be a soldier. If you want to be a soldier, that's fine with me. Dying for your country on a foreign field is not a bad way to die. not. I'd be proud of you. But you only can do that on your own free will. I'll never push you to join the military. I'm not against a child dying as a sacrifice or a young man going sacrifice in his life for what he thinks is his duty or a better cause. Whether it's as a firefighter an officer of the law, or a soldier for his country. If he feels like that's his duty, and he's obligated to do that, and he feels like that's what he wants to do, that's fine with me. And I'll try to accept it if I lose him. 
I got three sons. You know, the military might be a very real, real reality with them boys. Why? Because I don't, I'm not raising them to be wimps. And when you're raised not to be a wimp, the military seems appealing to you. You know what my dream as a young boy was? When I was 15 years old, I had a dream. What do you want to be, son, when you grow up? I want to be a marine sniper. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up. The problem was, when I came to the age to enlist, and I almost enlisted in the Marines, when I came to the age to enlist, that was right when the time that Bosnia incident happened with Clinton. Clinton was president. I looked at that thing, and I'm like, I don't want to serve under this clown. And I never enlisted. After that, I got called to preach, and I wound up in the Lord's Army instead. And uh, but but I have not. I I am definitely not against it. Matter of fact, I've always said with the character of today, if I was, I'd, I'd initiate the draft and force every young man to do two years military service in America. A forced draft. Why? Because they need to learn how to be men today, and the military will at least teach them how to be men. I'm not saying that's necessary with all young men, but I think, I don't know, I think it might not hurt this country a whole lot to teach them a little bit of character, toughness. But, uh, but that's a sacrifice of duty. It's a sacrifice of duty. Duty is not wrong, but make sure the duty you put on your kids is a God-given duty to them. Not something you're forcing on them. And don't do it out of ignorance. Many a father, if you want to be a godly father, don't be ignorant. The Word of God is important to you fathers. You want to raise your children right? Raise them by the Word of God. You know what you need to be? You need to be a Bible reading father. You need to be a Bible believing father. You need to be a Bible practicing father. Your kids need to realize that you are a man that believes this book. Why? So they can believe it and read it. Duty. The sacrifice of duty. That's a complicated one because in many ways you want to teach your children duty. But you don't want them to for, you don't want to force them into a false duty. That girl did not have to die that Japheth sacrificed. Why? Because it was out of duty, but it was ignorance. Also. It was ignorance. You know what the best thing for my children is? For them to find the will of the Lord for their lives and do it. You say, what is that? That's between them and God. I can't make that decision for them. I can just point them toward God and say, learn how to communicate with Him and have a personal relationship with Him and draw close to Him and He will take over. I'll guide them up till they're 18. At that point in time, they better learn how to follow the Lord because I'm stepping back. Unless they stay in my basement, then I'm still going to put some rules out. <laughs> but, 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 but ultimately, I want them to follow the Lord on their own. I want them to follow the Lord on their own. I want them to do on their own. Next one we have is the sacrifice of obedience and faith. The sacrifice of obedience and faith. Now, Japheth was out of ignorance, but we have another character that sacrifices his son. And where does he do it? He does it in his heart. His name's Abraham. You take your Bible and turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, 18, and 19. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, Then Isaac shall 
thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Now, I understand the angel of the Lord prevented Abraham from actually offering Isaac. But when I, uh, Abraham took Isaac up on that mountain to sacrifice him, when his faith was tried, he had every intention of sacrificing. Thinking, well, God told me uh, of Isaac would my seed be multiplied, so he's going to raise Isaac back up to life. That's how much faith Abraham had. He figured he'd slay that boy and the boy would be raised back up. Abraham had some faith. He also was obedient to the Lord. Now there's a sacrifice of obedience and faith. You say, How, how's that sacrifice performed? Now this is a good sacrifice to have. Never put your kids above the calling of God and obedience of God. Why? Because if you put your kids first, you'll lose your kids. If you put God first, God will take care of your kids. You've got to put God first. Many a times I've looked at my family and I've said, what is practically the best for my family? And I'll come up with the answer. This is what's practically best. And the Lord will step on, but that's not what I asked you to do. And I have to say, all right, Lord, I can either do what you asked me to do, or I can do what's best for my family. Okay, I'll do what you ask. And then the Lord steps in, takes care of my family better than I ever could if I'd done what was practical. But um, what's the importance there? The importance is that there's a sacrifice that you have to make of obedience. A sacrifice of obedience to God. If you'll obey God, if you'll be faithful to God and have faith, He'll take care of your kids. And your kids will learn one of the most important lessons in life. And that's that God takes care of those that are faithful to Him. They'll learn how to walk by faith. Now they may not see all the details the way you see them. They might not see things quite the way you see them. But there will come a point in time when they'll remember and they'll start coming to the understanding when they're older. Now I know what my parents were doing. There's things that my mom and dad did that I never understood until I became a parent. Until I started serving God. Now I look at it I'm like, man, I had a good father. My dad was a good dad. He, had, he, he gave me some good examples. Now I understand why he did some of the things he did. Why he said some of the things he said. Why he was motivated to do some of the things he did. Why he put a big emphasis on the things he put them on. Now I get it. As a kid, I didn't really. I mean, I was just a kid. All that interested me then was running through the woods, fishing, hunting, playing. We didn't think about all that stuff. We're kids. I mean, but as you get older, as you get older and you look back, then you start understanding some things. You know what? Right now is a time as a father to be obedient to the Lord. Are you a good father? Do you sacrifice to obedient, uh, your kids to obedience to the Lord? You say, what does that mean? Always put God above your children. Always put God. If you will put God first, God will save your family. If you put your family first, you will lose your family. you got to put God first. And that's with everything in your life. The Lord wants to have first place in your life. If you will put Him first, then the other things that follow, He'll take care of. But you've got to put Him first. You've got to trust Him. Abraham trusts in obedience. Hannah does the same thing with Samuel. 
She gives Samuel holy over to the Lord. Do you trust the Lord with your kids? Do you trust them? Are you willing to give them? Let, let's say your kid wants, and when he grows old, he decides that he wants to be a missionary to Haiti. I just read about a young missionary couple got killed in Haiti. Young couple. Let's say your child wants to be a missionary to Haiti. He feels like God's called. And you say, all right, if that's God's calling for your life, I'm not going to stand in the way. You do what God's called you to do. You be obedient to the Lord. As a parent, you step back and you let your child go to Haiti. And maybe they'll die a martyr's death. You willing to do that? The Lord will raise them up someday. And they'll be richer than you are in eternity. You willing to do that? You willing to let them go? Sacrifice your children on the altar of obedience? That's tough. That's tough. And uh, you never know. You never know. It may be you someday. You have to give them to the Lord. You gotta let the Lord have them. Then the last sacrifice I see is the greatest sacrifice of all, and this sacrifice is the sacrifice of love. Take your Bible and turn to John chapter three, verse sixteen. I see a father that sacrifices his son for love. For the love of others. He sacrifices his son. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's a father sacrificing his son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten son. We read about the ultimate sacrifice here of a father and a son. And that's God the Father sacrificing His Son so you can have eternal life. You know what God did? He didn't force His Son to do it unwillingly. Jesus Christ went to the cross willingly. But you know what the Father and the Son did? They got together back in eternity before you and I were created, before the earth was created. And they got together and they said, okay, we have foreknowledge, we know what's coming. It says, and they say, you know, we need to do something for the, because we love mankind to help mankind through this time that's going to be something better for the whole. And the only solution is that I sacrifice you so that they all might be saved. The son says, Amen. That, that, that sounds like a noble sacrifice. Many a times when a father has to allow his son to go into the military, that boy might be sacrificed for what you hope to be a better good. It's a sacrifice. Every one of them soldiers that die on a foreign field fighting for the cause of freedom... The ideal behind it is that you're doing something for a better good for the world. And you realize most of our young men die fighting on a foreign field fighting for some other country just so freedom can be something that is viewed through the entire world so we never have to fight for it again on our home home front. Hey, World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, Korean War, those were Afghan War, those were all fought, fought overseas. And the reason being is we're trying to keep the oppressors from ever even making it to America. And it's a sacrifice that we find to be acceptable for the better whole. And that's why... It, upsets us greatly when we see our country going to communism even without a fight. And for Americans it, it does it is very upsetting. 
is very upsetting. But the ideal is because you love the greater whole that you're willing to sacrifice your son. God the Father loved you enough He was willing to sacrifice His Son for your benefit. For your benefit. Let me tell you, if my children go and die on a foreign field for the sake of freedom, and then the knuckleheads in this country don't respect that sacrifice and give up their freedom without even thinking about it, I'd be one upset father. I'd be one upset father. You despise what they died for? That would upset me greatly. How do you think God feels when you despise the sacrifice of His Son for your sin? How do you think He feels? You despise the sacrifice of love that He gave your, for your greater good so you didn't have to die and pay for your sins in hell. And you say, I don't need that sacrifice. You despise that sacrifice. And you go off and you live in your sins without receiving Jesus Christ and you say, one of these days you're going to face that Father. And He's going to say, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. It wasn't meant for you, but that's what you want, you get it. You know what? America's going to get what they deserve one of these days because they've been despising what they've been given. They've despised the sacrifice that was made by many. They want socialism. They want communism. I'm afraid that one of these days they're going to get it. One of these days they're going to be under the reign of the Antichrist. All that stuff's going to be coming down on them. They're going to be getting exactly what they wanted. I, I hope it will be under the Antichrist because I don't want to be here to see it. I don't want to be here to see it. If the Lord tarries though, if the Lord tarries, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see them Countries in Europe might be better off than what we are here. That's hard to imagine. But you might see they're better off than we are. They, they might be more free than we are. Simona used to tell me all the time after coming to Romania, she goes, y'all are more socialistic than we are. You're worse off than Romania. You're more under communist. You ain't got as much freedom as we did in Romania. Now, I don't know if she was completely correct on that, but she said, we don't have to pay fees for this. We don't have to pay. We can do this. We can do this. We don't have to pay all these license fees, legislated on all this stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, she's, kind of, she's right. right. She's correct on that. We still have hunt and we still have guns. Did you know how much fees you pay for everything else? You pay a lot of fees. You're not as free as you think you are. But when it comes to salvation, you're not as well off as you think you are without Jesus Christ. That burden of sin, that's just like sin. That sin controls every aspect of your life. You say, oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm alright. I'm a pretty good person. You don't realize you're lost and sold under sin and enslaved to sin. And when it's done, you'll wake up in a lake of fire and there's no freedom and joy in sin. But there's a sacrifice made for you. There's a sacrifice of love. Don't despise the sacrifice that God gave you with His Son. There's a sacrifice of love. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior before it's too late. And we need to close. So let's have a song of invitation. Fathers, if you're going to be a good father, don't 
sacrifice your children under self-preservation. If you're going to be a father, don't wait to make a sacrifice of yourself. Do it before it's too late. If you're going to be a good father, don't sacrifice your children under a false duty out of ignorance. If you're going to be a good father, be obedient in your sacrifice and faithful. And last of all, don't despise the great sacrifice of love that God gave you. Let's have a song of invitation. Huh?